Hello and welcome to Tasting with Mike and Matt. I'm Mike Veach and this is my partner in crime Matt Cohorse. Howdy. And today we are going to be tasting a couple of bourbons from the Dueling Grounds Distillery. We have the Lincoln Pinch Bottled and Bond and their Single Barrel Cast Strength. Okay. Now where's the Dueling Grounds at? It's in Franklin, Kentucky. If you're heading south out of Louisville towards Nashville, it's the last exit out off I-65 before you go into Tennessee. And it's about a five-minute drive from the exit if it's that long. Uh, beautiful little distillery. Mm, nice. um, making about three barrels uh, uh, a week, three or four barrels a week. <laughs> It's a little operation. Yeah, a little operation, but they're making really good. It's a weeded bourbon. And Lincoln Pinch comes from the name, uh, the name comes from the Lincoln Pinch Farm, close to where the distillery is, uh, where Dueling Grounds is. Uh, because back in the late 18th, early 19th century, that's where a lot of duels were being fought on the farm there. So that the area became known as Dueling Grounds, mm. and you know you have the Dueling Grounds racetrack, the only turf racetrack in Kentucky, full-time turf, nothing but turf. Is that a horse racetrack? Yeah. Oh, I never heard of it. Yeah, and cool. then you got the Dueling Grounds the distillery there with their two Lincoln Pinch bourbons. Sweet. Very nice bourbons. Uh, met the guys that own the, met the guy that owns it, and the guy that's doing their, his distilling for him now. This stuff was actually distilled by the owner. Oh, okay. Then, about two years ago, two or three years ago, I forget exactly what he said, he hired this other distiller um, to start making his whiskey for him because he was getting busy enough that he needed help. Mm -hmm. And um, same recipe, but, you know... Uh, Hopefully there be, might be a little flavor drift between the two distillers, but um, if anything, I'm looking for it to be a little better, you know, maybe. But, I mean, it's great whiskey as it is. Yeah. But this guy, I've talked to him. He's a talented distiller, so once he starts yeah. making it... He... Just looking at it, it's got a really nice color to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's start with the bottled and bond. This is a four-year-old weeded recipe bourbon... Whiskey. Do they have the percentages on there or anything like that? Or is it just weeded? I, you know, he had said to me what the percentages were down there. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's like 70, 18, 12, or 2010, something like that. Okay. So this is the bottle and bottle. four-year-old yeah looks beautiful you know it's your typical artisan distiller price uh, you're gonna find it for probably about fifty dollars a bottle is this available it's, wide or well not really it's I think far as I know it's only in Kentucky okay and maybe Tennessee I think he said he's hoping to bring it into Indiana the problem is you know he's only making like Four barrels a week. Right. He have so a I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of product to get out into these markets yet. But he's increased, you know, with the uh, with the help and everything, he's been able to increase. Uh, he's actually getting a slightly bigger still. Um, but he, the big thing was is he got more fermenters. Mm, okay. So he's fermenting more, uh, allowing him to run the distill lot. The you know the his still, which is a Nice little one. Um, longer and make a little bit more whiskey and everything. Uh, but then, you know, once he fills the barrels, he has to actually ship them to Danville, where he's renting space from uh, um, Wilderness Trails warehouses to age his whiskey. Oh, okay. So he doesn't have his own warehouse. Does not have his own warehouse yet. Okay. So. Hmm. Lots of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Some nice. What is that? Apples? Cherries? Both? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or is it raspberry? 
apples and raspberry, I think. Yeah, you can go more towards raspberry. <clears throat> well, let's taste it, see what... Mm. I'm almost getting a little... It gets caramel. Yeah, it's caramel. Caramelly. It's almost like caramel apple. And I'm getting that raspberry, on, particularly raspberry. on the finish. Mm-hmm. A little, little bit of baking spices, more like a nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice. Yeah, nice and rich. Maybe a little cardamom, even. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, caramel. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's clear our palate. And... Let's see what a pecan does. Oh, that's nice. That spice is definitely cardamom with the pecan. Cause it's got a little citrus note like cardamom does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like more caramel. More caramel. Get a little Let, less, less fruit, but what fruit is there is more of that raspberry cherry. Mm -hmm. Finishes. Mm -hmm. Very nice oak. Yeah. Oak, and then you get that caramel and just kind of right. there, nice, nice little spice kick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's try a piece of chocolate. Our standard Hershey Kisses. Thank dark you. chocolate dark kisses chocolate. for people that uh, want to know. We picked these because we wanted uh, uh, a chocolate that everybody could follow along with and they wouldn't have trouble getting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really nice with the chocolate. That vanilla becomes caramel to me. Mm -hmm. That spice is still there. Not as much fruit. Not much fruit at all, but the, the finish is loud. Yeah. There's a lot of oak in there. A lot of oak, a lot of that cardamom, and a little bit of that, just that, probably from the candy itself, that lingering chocolate. Mm hmm. Very nice. Yeah, great pairing. I think we may have skipped the cran. Should we go back and do the cran? You know, you're right. We need to go back and do the cran. Yeah, do back, go back and do the cran. We're just so ready for that chocolate, aren't we? Oh, that's good. That really brings out that apple and and the raspberry. Yeah, I mean, getting like a floral note in there. I'm not yeah. sure what it is, but um, yeah, the finish is a little a little lighter, um, but it brings out that nice caramel spice for me. I really like yeah. that. It just kind of lingers and sits there in the back of the throat, and it's it's, a, it's really pleasant. Yeah. So let's see what the uh, let's clear our palate. And then try to see what the uh, barrel strength, a single barrel does. So this is from barrel 68. It's four years old, 122.6 proof. You got a high proof there. Yeah. Well, they put it in the barrel at 120. Okay. A little bit lower than the standard, but uh, I think I might have talked them into looking at lower barrel entry proof when I was down there talking to them. <laughs> you know, I told them 107, you know, for a weeded recipe, it's very traditional. That's what Stitzel Weller used to do. 107 barrel entry proof back in the 1940s and 50s. So it'll get to like, what, one, 110 when it's done? Yeah. That's Depends about, on where it's in the warehouse. It could go as high as 115 on yeah. the upper floors. I but yeah, that, that's kind of a magic number for me. Like the, Really good stuff. It sits kind of up there in the what 105, 115 kind of. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, nose is very similar to that one, but this is like, think of the bottom bond only on steroids. <laughs> yeah. 
a lot more caramel. Mm -hmm. That apple, that baking spices, cardamom, nutmeg, cinnamon. You're getting all that. It's just really strong. Yeah, and that little bit of a fruity raspberry, cherry, and lots of oak. Mm -hmm. So let's taste it. Oh, yeah. That raspberry really particularly comes out strong. Mm hmm Yeah, and, and the oak is just going wild back there in the, in the finish. It's, yeah. It's a strong one. Um, I gotta say, I, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I, I like it. And I, I'm not usually a big fan of, like, going up that high in your... Yeah. You know, in your proofs there. Like, like I said, I like 115 is about as high as I really like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, generally, you know. You know, it's the higher proofs up in the one twenties can be good, mm -hmm. but not always. My my experience is that when you get in those really high proofs, it's a, the oak tannins just dominate it too much. Yeah, and there's a little more oak tannins in this one than the bottom there line. There is. There is. But it's not unpleasant. So let's try the cranberry. Let's not forget the cranberry this okay. time. <laughs> but I think kind of what saves it is is that nice. Blackberry, raspberry, mm -hmm. from being way too tannic. Yeah, that lingering fruit. Mm hmm. A lingering fruit. That's that is, nice. That's nice, yeah. It's very nice. It, it heightens that fruit. Um, makes it even sweeter, almost cherry like sweetness. Yeah. You know? Um, but it kind of takes the apple out of it. It does take the apple out of it. So I'm getting like, and it, it makes it more vanilla than yeah. caramel for me. It does. Um, it tames that oak in the back, which I think there was a little too much on the neat. So I almost, I don't know, it's it's a toss-up, but I'm almost enjoying the the crayon more than neat. You know, this would probably make a really good paper plane. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Paper planes are... I, I just started trying them like a month ago, and they are just... Yeah. I like my new favorite cocktail. <laughs> Let's try it with the con. That's really good, too. Yeah. That really didn't take away the fruit no too much it, it but what it did is it really enriched that caramel mm -hmm. and i'm even getting a little bit of a note of milk chocolate yeah mm -hmm. i'm getting like caramel yeah like, it's almost like a caramel apple you do at the fair yeah and then throw throw just a little bit of chocolate sauce mm. on there too yeah that's good that's really good. with that lingering nuttiness from the pecan yeah mm. That's the best one yet. Well, let's try it with the chocolate and see what we think. That really makes it rich in caramel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A good buttered caramel, a little bit of cardamom spice. Yeah. Not much fruit. But then on the finish, you get a lot of oak, a lot of cardamom, a lingering caramel chocolate notes. Yeah. Just made that, yeah, that chocolate caramel so rich. Like a Rolo or like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a Milk Dud, but better. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's very pleasant, yeah. And it... It really didn't like uh, make the oak stand out too much. Um, it just kind of lingers like like chocolate back there. Yeah, yeah, that's really good too. I mean, that's that's kind of a toss up there at the end. Yeah. yeah. So I like both these whiskeys. I do too. Now I think the barrel strength is going to be a little more expensive. I think it's probably running around the sixty seventy dollar range. Yeah. But they're both really good, and... Uh, I would add it to the collection. Yeah. Yeah. 
So here you go. Here's the dueling ground distillery. Keep up the good work. Yeah, great stuff. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.